What's your background? Oh boy, I have an interesting story. So uh, first of all, I'm the oldest of six kids. So I'm always used to juggling and, you know, managing things and, and helping other people. So maybe some of that comes comes from that background. But, you know, I came to Alaska with a girlfriend when I was 18. We came for a two week vacation. And um, then I decided I'm going to stay the summer. And she she decided the same thing. And then both of us said, you know what, this is home. And we stayed here. We've been here. I've been here ever since. It's been 40 year, 40 plus years. My friend was here until a few years ago when her husband passed away and she left state to be near family. But um, this is my chosen home and I'm happy to be here. I, I love Alaska. You know, I have experience in private industry. I've worked in, um, in the utility industries. I have worked in retail. I, my dad had an insurance agency. I did a little bit of work there growing up. Um, my dad also had a farm in a very small farm um, that he raised bison on. And so I had some interesting experiences helping to do that. But it, it wasn't a large herd like the great big national ones. There was only 25 animals, but they are beautiful creatures that I love. Um, you know, I, I'm so glad that we still get to see them and all the other beauty in, in nature. But I've also worked in the Alaska State Legislature. I have worked in several different administrations for Republican governors in, in other um, positions around the state. Um, I ran for office again in 2018 and won. And the reason I ran and jumped back in was because I was so disgusted with what was happening in our state with crime. And basically we were saying criminals, you've got the right of way, do whatever you want to do. Victims, so sad, you know, sorry, you're a victim, but we don't care. And the criminals just were getting away and I, I was sick of it. So I jumped back in. Um, the governor knew what my stand was on public safety and we, we aligned on that. And so he actually asked me if I would, instead of being seated in that office, if I would be the commissioner of department of corrections. And I did agree to that. And I served in that position and, um, really enjoyed it. And I, I enjoyed it because of the great people that work in that department. And, um, you know, a, a prison is like a little mini city and you have everything, healthcare, education, all, all types of things in there. But I was doing my job, loving it. And then the governor said, hey, would you be willing to be my running mate? And um, so I accepted that offer that um, was willing to step up and help him. And, um, you know, we've been doing that for the last two years. Um, and then here we are. I don't like what's happening in our country. And I really don't like it, how it's affecting our state, our great state of Alaska. And it's time to jump in again and fight. Um, we know that Biden is basically trying to shut our state down. And unfortunately, he's had the help of our congresswoman who has been voting and going right along you know, with him on these things. And so um, I'm, I want to fight. I'm willing to go to to DC and stand up for Alaska. And that's why I decided to jump into this race. Well, you've been standing up for Alaska for a long time, and it sounds like in a number of different capacities, both in the executive branch and in the legislative branch. Uh, so you've got uh, a lot of the the kind of experience that would be very helpful to, to bring to DC, both as a legislator, legislator and as an, as an executive. Uh, can you talk about some of the other positions you held with other governors uh, in addition to uh, the most recent one you had before becoming lieutenant governor, which was uh, the commissioner of the, of the Department of Corrections? Sure. So I worked in Department of Commerce and was executive director of Serve Alaska. And what they do is they work with AmeriCorps members who go around the state and do wonderful projects nationwide. There's an AmeriCorps program. And um, again, they do lots of volunteer work. They do get paid um, for a lot of the work that they do, but they're, they're doing everything from grandparent programs to helping kids, to helping build trails, to helping teach people literacy. Um, they, they do all kinds of fantastic work. I worked in Department of Labor as the executive director of AWIB, which is the Alaska Workforce Investment Board. And that's a 25 member governor appointed board representing all industry um, 
in the state, um, education and everything's in, uh, represented in that. And the goal with that group was to bring people together, help promote the governor's plan and good economic plans and policies for the state of Alaska. And again, you know, I love that because there's so many people. Um, there's one thing, people that know me know my favorite thing is working with people. And I like talking and working with people uh, all across the spectrum um, and um, just having the opportunities to help and to learn from them all. Nancy, what, sorry. Go for it. <laughs> I was just curious, uh, what makes you the best qualified to hold this position over our current incumbent? Well, I believe that my votes, in fact, I know that my votes would be um, a lot different than the current incumbent. Um, I, I, I served with Representative Peltola in the Alaska legislature, and she's a nice, wonderful lady. I, I like her, but our votes are very different. And that's why I'm running is I disagree with the votes. Um, I, I will always stand up for the military. I will always stand up um, you know, for our state, and I will stand up to unleash the resources in our state that are now currently bound up. And so not only are we not able to produce, which is affecting our economy, so, you know, there's a trickle-down effect with that. It affects our families. People can't spend the same. They can't enjoy the same things. But we've also had an outward migration in our state for 11 years and when the economy is going down the tubes people they have to leave to find you know good opportunities um so those types of things are things that have been okay and she's voted with i absolutely disagree with um i have far more extensive experience um than she does in you know with the positions that i've held around the state I've chaired major committees in the legislature. As a member of the House majority, you have those opportunities. I've served in leadership um, positions. I was the rules chair in the, in the Alaska uh, legislature in the majority. And the rules chair, you know, I don't really like to brag about myself. It's easier to brag and build, about, build up other people. But the rules chair is important because that's the position that determines what legislation goes to the floor. You know, it can be voted on, it can be passed out of the committee um, unanimously. And if the rules chair doesn't schedule it to the floor, it's not going to be heard. It's not going to be um, going to be voted on. And so that's a position that's critical. Um, also, it's critical that, that that person is able to to work with everybody, because, you know, even though um, you're working with your majority, you're representing all Alaskans when you serve in the legislature and it's important to be able to to do that. And th those are areas that I succeeded in. And um, I think, you know, that's some experience that she hasn't had. Right. You know, one of the other things that I can I can say that I've appreciated about your leadership, uh, Nancy, is the advocacy that you've done in the area of uh, fighting uh, human sex trafficking uh, in Alaska and fighting against uh, sexual violence um, and standing up for those uh, voices that are often unheard in, in that area. And so um, we have about 30 seconds. Anything that you want to say on that before we head into our break? I'll, thanks for bringing that up. I will always defend the vulnerable and those that cannot defend themselves. We have a moral responsibility as Americans to do that. And I will always do that. <laughs> 